It is very common on single page dynamic applications to load the data that is needed via API calls, most commonly made in the background using Ajax. Angular provides a service named $HTTP to make Ajax calls, and we will learn how to use that service. Also, since Ajax calls are asynchronous, we will be using callbacks to act upon completion of those calls, whether they are successful or not. Ajax calls can be made using various HTTP methods, such as GET, POST, etc., and sometimes include parameters or POST data, and we will see how to build such requests. Finally, cross-domain restrictions sometimes require the use of JSONP, which stands for JSON with padding, and we will discuss how to use those in the last video of the section. In the first video, let's start with simple GET calls to load data from our own web server using Angular's $HTTP service. Let's open main.js, and if you look at the controllers that we have built in the previous sections, you can see that we hard-coded the list of movies to be displayed as an array of objects. This is obviously not realistic in a real application, so here we've removed the raw data from the controller. We will populate the array $scope.movies shortly. We created a JSON file, which can be served by our web server, to simulate an API point. You can point your browser to localhost port 9000 slash movies.json to see the data displayed. In a full stack operation, you can use any one of your favorite taste of backend, Rails, Django, MVC4, or even something as plain as our JSON file. What interests us here is the front end part, which remains the same regardless of your back end. Now let's get back to our main controller in main.js and let's load the data from this API point. We mentioned that Ajax calls are made through the $HTTP service. So the first thing is to request that service. We've seen this before in the parameters of the controller function. We just need to add $HTTP and the service is made available to you in this controller. $HTTP is built into the core of Angular so we don't need to include any new dependency in app.js. So to make a call using HTTP get method, we can simply use $HTTP.get. The first parameter of that function is the URL we are pointing to, which in our case is simply slash movies.json. We will talk about the second parameter, which is an optional configuration object in the third video. For now, we will stick to a simple default config. That should be sufficient. $HTTP.get calls are asynchronous, as are all Ajax calls. And so you can't simply set $scope.movies equals to HTTP.get. Instead, the way HTTP.get works is that it has a success method, which takes a callback as argument. A callback is simply a function which will be called once the asynchronous action has completed. In the case of $HTTP.get.success, the function receives as first parameter the data from the API, and it's already been passed through JSON. So let's add a console debug so you can see the data loaded later. And since that data comes exactly as it is defined in movies.json, all we need to do is, inside the callback, set $scope.movies to be equal to the data that was loaded. Thanks to Angular data binding, as soon as we change something on the scope, Angular will take care of reflecting it on the view. So the moment we set this array, the list will appear. Let's open the browser, and you can see that the data is showing as expected. Let's have a slightly deeper look at things, open the developer console, and you can see the debug that we put in place earlier, showing the data inside the success callback. Also in the developer console, have a look at the network tab and filter by XHR and you'll see the call made to movies.json with a little bit more information. Let's get back to main.js and note that before setting the data to $scope.movies, we can actually modify it. For example, we could build the slugs or sort the data. Let's create the slugs. 
So we'll do that for each movie. I'll keep it simple and simply lowercase the title. So dot to lowercase and replace blank spaces with dashes. And simply set that to the slug. So that the anchor tag actually gives us a nice looking URL. And this is all it takes to load data via Ajax, which as you can see, is really straightforward. Inside the success callback, you can work on the data and once ready, set the values to the scope. Of course, not everything always goes well when calling APIs. So in the next video, we'll have a deeper look at handling response and all the parameters that are provided to the success and error callbacks, which we will introduce in the next video.